Oh, plush, plush, mostly because of the midsole. I mean, come on, how can it not be comfortable with 47 millimeters of fuel cell understep? We need to invent a new word in the studio today. All right, maximalist plus. I'm thinking like Titanic. That's what you're looking at here. This is the Titanic, everybody. 40, there's a stack heights. Oh my goodness. 47 and 39. I was, now let's put the scale. As soon as I put them on my feet, I was like, man, are these over 10 ounces in my size? If they are, that's not so good. But look. 9.3, not too shabby. The score is pretty good because of that stack height. I was expecting over 10 ounces. I mean, 47, 47. So technically, you know, if, you know, technically they're not legal for world athletics as if you're taking them into a race with, you know, for the professionals out there. But man, 47 and 39, unbelievable. Engineered knit and oh, so breathable. Look at that. Uh, toe box, very breathable. Not the best for the winter, maybe, especially if you live in a really, really cold area, but it is very breathable for the uh, summer months. Uh, booty style collar, okay. Semi gusseted tongue, a unique tongue. It's not a tongue, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's, very, it's very minimalist with respect to the tongue. It's not thick and uh, very, almost like a hypo knit for that tongue, if that makes sense. Now I'm loving New Balance, the uh, extra padding there through the heel counter. Okay, let's do the heel counter. Okay, very flexible, all right? There's my scores for the upper. Not a great score for the lockdown, mostly because of that booty. It's just a little, a little wonky, a little loosey-goosey <laughs> there. And speaking of loosey-goosey, let's do it. Okay, oh, there's a plate inside that midsole, by the way. It's twisting, but not I'm putting all the force I can, so we're not going to do any geese today. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm pleased with the upper. I just don't know what's going to happen long term with that collar. Uh, yeah, if you like a booty style collar, buy this shoe 100%. Fuel cell nitrogen fuel TPU performance foam. All right. It's bouncy. And let's do the thumb test. Oh, all right, nice. Nice energy return. I think I got about a 35 for the durometer, so pretty soft. Yeah, there's 36. All right, let's just check this side, 32. So there you have it. Very, you know, that's soft. That's, you know, not quite rebel territory, but we're talking about a soft midsole. And it does have that carbon fiber energy arc plate. You can see it there through that crazy outsole. Speaking of the outsole, I love it. All right, not the, the, there is rubber for sure, but it's very thin and they're definitely designing it for a little bit of pick up the pace type of type of speed. And it's a crazy outsole. Like, look at that. It's a can. It's, this is the Grand Canyon of outsoles as far as that. I don't even know if you could, I think it's a decoupled groove, but it's like, it's just wild. You can see right into that energy arc there for me. It was not unstable. I bet some people are reporting that that might feel a little unstable to have that. I liked it. But uh, actually, if you own the shoe, which I know a lot of you already do, let us know in the comments. Did you feel a little unstable, especially if you'd be a heel striker? Maybe that's why I did not feel unstable because I'm more up into the four foot category. All right, there's a score for the outsole. I'm loving it. Fit, there you go. Comfort, oh, plush, plush, mostly because of the midsole. I mean, come on. How can it not be comfortable with 47 millimeters of fuel cell understep? And yeah, it felt stable, energy return. Now, I guess I gotta, I gotta talk about how would I use this shoe? Who is it best for? Um, hmm. Okay, well, okay, I, actually, I, I remember now. Old man legs. That's why, that's how I use it. When I'm tired and it's coming, you know, I'd say by like mid-December, late late December, the legs are gonna start barking at me. That's when I'm gonna reach for this guy just to take a little, take the edge off a little bit. So whether it's a long run, not fast, whether it's an easy day, now I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, opt for this, you know, uh, as far as like first option because of that plate in there. If it didn't have the plate, I probably would for easy days. But this is more that middle distance, long run, kind of bop it along, nothing crazy pace, and just baby the legs. I mean, come on, 47 and 39. All right, positives. 
They went for it. I like the fact that New Balance said, you know what, we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna rip the Band-Aid off and just let it go. And whatever people think is whatever people think. I love, like, they had no, like this is such, I was, in fact, other shoes to buy on your screen right now. I was trying to think what other shoe is like this. And I sat there and sat there for a good five minutes. Then I did remember the Invincible, all right, from Nike. But, and then I was saying, oh, maybe Bondi lineup, maybe, uh, so it's, it's a tough one. This is a tough one to put into. There's not many other shoes out there like this guy. I guess the, the Primax from Adidas, as far as, you know, as far as like stack height is concerned. Anyway, durability prediction, there you have it. Price point, that's pretty, that's pretty high. That's pretty, I mean, even though it's fun, it's interesting New Balance, but yeah, it's getting way up there actually. So I, I went six out of 10 for that price point. If it was 159, it'd be a lot more interesting or 149, but man, one, one, what was it, 179, that is definitely getting up there. Shoe quick specs one more time. And that full review score, soak it in right now, 7.3 out of 10. We got a shoe into the sevens again. That's what I'm talking about, New Balance. So 7.3, would I buy it again? I would. I would to baby the legs. That's it. Just when I just wanna, and listen, not getting any younger. And volume is still high and vertical. Get, so I just need moments where I'm just like taking it easy. And that's where this shoe comes into play. Sound good? Eric White sounds good. He says, comment of the day, currently using the Saucony Tempest. Love that shoe. It's available down below in the description. I'm just loving the shoe for its innovative approach to light stability. Very comfortable and smooth underfoot. Couldn't agree more, Eric. He goes on, Saucony had really been winning me over the last couple of years, and I've become a fan for sure. Eric, they're definitely in the running for running shoe company of the year here in the studio. They're just, they're knocking it out of the park, Saucony. So question of the day, what has been your favorite maximalist running shoe in the past two years? All right, so hit pause, think. So we're talking over 35 millimeters, really like over 37 millimeters of midsole in the heel especially, all right? So big shoes, and why? If you care to care to take a gander down in the comments, they'll be waiting for you. I think that's it. Um, I'm impressed, New Balance. I mean, it's, it's a unique shoe. It's not for everybody, but again, baby the legs a little bit. And speaking of baby in the legs, we'll toss it to, I don't know, maybe the road running shoe playlist, road running shoe playlist right there, all right. All the shoes right there, right there, right there. Onward we go, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.